Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the AXA Group's annual earnings uh, for the press meeting. Uh, this is a special one this year. Given the sanitary uh, requirements, we cannot welcome you here at our head office. So this is a digital format that will allow you to interact with the group's management and ask your questions. The presentation of the earnings will be made by Thomas Bouber, CEO for AXA, Etienne Bois-Laurent, CFO for the group. It will be followed up with a Q&A session in which will be involved as well Jacques de Peretti, uh, CEO and Chairman of AXA France, and Alban de Mayinel, uh, in charge of risk and CAPEX for the group. We also have a number of members of our management committee who are connected, if need be, for uh, your questions. I wish you a very good conference, and I'll turn it over to Thomas Bubel. Thank you, Ulrike. Good morning, everyone. I'm extremely happy to be with you today in this digital uh, format. Welcome to this presentation of the AXA Group's annual earnings. Starting now with 2020. 2020 saw an unprecedented health and economic crisis, which will be a landmark. This crisis has allowed us to demonstrate acts as very strong robustness. You can already see the group's revenues standing at 97 billion euros, nearly stable. This is the outcome of the very strong performance of our priority activities. This is also certainly the result of our investments in the digital. This allowed us to carry on with our businesses, our customer service, despite the lockdown. Thanks to all of this, we are able to generate a high level of underlying earnings at 4.3 billion euros. This resu result naturally is down by 34%. But as we already said, this crisis is costing us 1.5 billion in compensation and in solidarity measures. It is our business to be with our customers in hard times whilst remaining solid financially. And that's exactly what we did. One indicator shows perfectly uh, our great soli solidity is the solvency to ratio. It amounts at 200 percent, which is up 20 points over the last uh, figures we had in the month of September. It is certainly uh, beyond our target. It's a, a key figure for us, and which shows that AXA is stable and AXA is solid and AXA is capable of weathering crisis while remaining very solid. And this is because we were able to keep up our commercial performance and a great financial solidity at the same time by protecting our customers that we are able today to pay out a dividend to our shareholders. This demonstrates the great solidity of the group, our confidence in 2021, and certainly a good alignment on our new plan called Driving Progress 2023. I've just told you that our revenues is nearly stable. It was stable last year. As I said, it's the result of a very good commercial momentum of our strategic business lines. There are three strategic business lines, commercial PNC, health and protection. Uh, commercial PNC was up by 2%. Health went up by 6% and protection up by 2%. Despite the crisis and the slowdown of the economy, these segments continued growing. And this shows, of course, uh, the great momentum, their potential, because it's now 
in the minds of everyone, it also shows the relevance of our strategic uh, choices that we made, which was to focus far more on risks that matter, on risks which are growing. These are our uh, businesses for the future, which meet these essential needs of our customers. We have seen in 2020 these are fundamental challenges in our societies, the climate, the health factor, but this also is true, and it is even truer uh, tomorrow. AXA resisted very well and started 2021 on a very positive path for several reasons underlying this. On the one hand, the growth in the priority segments gained ground in the third and then in the fourth quarter, plus 5%. Uh, on the other hand, we continued our work on PNC uh, profitability. If we strip out the exceptional effects of the crisis and of the NATCATs, our combined ratio continued to go down at 94.2%. Our strategic plan plans a combined ratio target at 93%. In other words, we are on the right path to achieve that. Finally, we continued our strategy to transform the uh, business mix in life, savings, and pension. We are highly focused on the products that are the most interesting for our customers and those that consume the least AXA for uh, capital, I mean for AXA. All these elements allow us to start 2021 on the right foot in terms of uh, commercial momentum and profitability as well. Last year, we already accelerated strongly the transformation of our subsidiary, AXA XL. Obviously, the COVID is a crisis in regard uh, uh, that hits mostly uh, the commercial uh, lines. Other entities in the group are benefiting from compensating the negative effect of the crisis through positive effects in the personal lines, which uh, saw a loss ratio that was much lower because they are less limited uh, to, uh, in terms of the risk coming from that uh, crisis. So despite that crisis, we took uh, clear decisions about transforming AXA XL. On the one hand, we decided to be extremely disciplined in terms of underwriting and reduce uh, uh, risks of underwriting in NATCATs and in terms of uh, risks related to COVID-19. And with a new team under the leadership of Scott Gunter, we are focusing now fully on this uh, transformation. Secondly, AXA XL has as well reduced the volatility the volatility uh, with a new structure of the reinsurance in the NATCAT, but also in regard to the reinsurance pertaining to reserves. All of this is focusing uh, in an environment in which prices are increasing sharply. You saw last year an increase of prices by 20%, and in the last uh, quarter, even it went up to 22%. All of this makes us confident that after a crisis that was well identified, we took the right decisions and we're taking advantage of rising prices, and I'm highly confident with my team about the fact that we'll manage to achieve uh, uh, our budget with 1.2 billion in terms of underlying earnings for 2021. Now, looking at the other markets, we see 
that is a very strong resilience of the results in Europe as well as in France. This is due to the fact that such entities, yes, have a negative effect following the COVID, but they have also the opportunity to offset that negative effect through positive effects in other business lines. But this requires great solidity uh, during the year with an underlying earnings that is stable at 4.3 billion euros. Now, health, as I said, is a focus that is the main one for us. And in Asia and international markets, the very sh strong growth of our uh, activities have shown uh, the high potential of business and momentum in these uh, regions has made us move forward well. The crisis confirmed that health remains a, a very important uh, need for our customers, and that's exactly the strategic segment which is at the heart of our plan and which we want to continue uh, to develop. Lastly, our development in uh, asset management shows a, a very good speeding up when it comes to alternatives. For example, investing in the property market, a growth of 14% of those assets, which is very good. And let me remind you that uh, AXA IM is the European leader in this alternative management, which is highly strategic for us and gives us opportunities uh, to invest over the long term at a very good profitability for our customers in a context with uh, low rates. All of this illustrates the relevance of our business mix uh, which is highly focused on technical risk and very well balanced uh, uh, among the various regions and really uh, meets the needs of customers, which is related to health, protection, but also to uh, corporate risks or commercial risks. As you can see, during this crisis, AXA remained very active in society whilst being very solid at the same time. It is thanks to AXA that we were able to commit ourselves for all the stakeholders. Of course, I have in mind our 100 million customers whom we protected. It was very tough for many of them with the lockdown, with situations that were extremely dire, and, uh, and these solidarity measures related to this pandemic amount to 1.5 billion euros. Uh, in our results, but it's also AXA's strength to be able to fully play its role of an insurer whilst being extremely resilient. The solidity has allowed us also to be very close to our employees. We're facing a situation that was hard, so how could we make sure that everyone would be able to work from remote while continuing to serve our clients? In that case, we took decisions that were very important, which were to guarantee uh, the jobs and um, wages and not resort to government aid. This has really helped us tremendously. We reassured, therefore, our employees, and as you will see in a few seconds, the satisfaction of our employees has increased uh, tremendously. I'm very proud of this, and I'd like really to extend my thanks to all our employees who have uh, really uh, adapted very well uh, to remote work, have focused very well on serving our customers, helping our customers in a situation that was really dire. Thanks to all of you for all of this. But at the same time, we played a significant role as a stabilizer 
in uh, the uh, pickup in the economy. When everything stopped uh, last year, we uh, engaged large sums to support the economic activity. For instance, in France, we dedicated 700 million euros to strengthen the equity of uh, SMEs, SMIs. At the same time, we, uh, we also uh, did our best for jobs. We recruited, we announced to recruit 5,000 uh, people in France. They have, out of which 30% are young, because I believe that the uh, commitment uh, towards young people is very important. I know that everyone has been hit by this crisis, but we did really our best to be a good uh, uh, support, a significant support uh, for uh, co uh, companies in the countries where we are doing business. Let me specifically focus now on our uh, customers. They were able to see in this exceptional and sometimes challenging context last year that a company uh, as modern as AXA, which is digitalized, can really uh, provide an added value, can really uh, contribute a, a full service in a totally new situation for us because all of us, we were working remotely and this mo modernization of our distribution network has strongly uh, increased between 2019 and 2020. In a way, it allowed to always uh, fulfill the needs of our customers and continue our service to customers through our agents. And myself, I uh, called on a number of uh, uh, agencies, branches during this crisis period, and like to thank really all our agents who did a remarkable job to help our customers to truly speaking stabilize their situation with all the means and the digital resources that they have. Uh, additionally, thanks to our digital investments in remote work, we had an opportunity to uh, make sure that all our employees could work remotely very quickly and be at the same level of uh, customer service uh, compared to where we were before when it was not remote work. And as I said, I'd like to really again to sincerely thank our uh, uh, people, our employees for this uh, amazing result. You have been great and thanks to all of that, the satisfaction of our customers increased by 19%, 19%, and as I said before, the satisfaction of employees also was increased at the same time by 14%, 14%. Of course, I know that everything was not perfect. And at the same time, certainly, I have in mind the customers we have who have a, a real hard time and still have a hard time in this crisis, such as restaurant owners. But AXA it has more than 100 individual customers and also corporate customers who are able to count on us during this very, very serious crisis. At the same time, I'd like to uh, focus on our commitment in fighting against uh, clim climate change. Whilst everyone was focusing on the crisis, on the health crisis, look, we remain extremely active about this uh, climate challenge. And this is why we decided to even uh, reinforce further our commitment in this arena. We continued to act as investors while dedicating more than 4 billion in 2020 during this ecological transition, transition which is so essential for us. We also set a target, and you saw it in the presentation of our plan, whereby we would reduce by 20% our carbon footprint of the assets of access to the general account by 2025. We also extended our actions as an insurer 
It's by studying a thinking process about risk underwriting. Our policy is very ambitious about our uh, capex or investment criteria, but at the same time, we must have the same ambition in regard to our uh, business as an insurer. This is why we called on the uh, creation of the Net Zero uh, and the Writing Alliance, Net Zero Insurance and the Writing Alliance. This could change the way we select our risks. Enfin, Lastly, and this is uh, the uh, first, the fight against climate change is now one of the priorities in our new strategic plan, which is called Driving in Progress. This is key, really. It is key that our societal uh, commitment be at the heart of our strategy. All the elements that I've just uh, presented to you make us very confident for uh, 2021. We believe that our uh, uh, companies will be able, and also societies will be able to move on, uh, and AXA could well perform well in a context after the COVID crisis in which we can truly speaking rely on our strength. The first of our strength clearly is the turnaround of AXA Excel in a context of a more positive market. You saw AXA Excel was the most hard-hit subsidiary. We took the necessary decisions and steps which are now being implemented. We are really in a very promising phase in terms of price increases. I'm highly confident about the fact that we'll uh, hit a 1.2 billion euro uh, budget, targeted budget. And the second key element is the perform the sustainable uh, performance in France and in Europe. Our positions are very strong in significant countries, and we saw during that crisis the resilience, the solidity of these uh, uh, operations in Europe and in France. And thirdly, it's a growth potential in our Asian regions, in the international uh, uh, market, in the way we manage uh, at AXA Investment Management, uh, how we manage our assets. As you will see, we are already uh, obtaining the benefits of our transformation. At the same time, we are confident because we have a strategic plan over three years, which is perfectly adjusted to the post-COVID situation. This plan was announced early December, and it is linked around five priorities which are very important for us. First of all, we want to uh, grow in health and protection. The crisis has shown us to what extent such challenges are so uh, basic for us. Secondly, we want to continue to simplify uh, customer, the customer experience and speed up our productivity efforts, because a company that is simpler, more uh, agile, is better positioned uh, to meet the needs of our customers. Thirdly, we want to clearly enhance our underwriting performances, especially at Excel, as I said before, while continuing our efforts to improve uh, the profitability. Fourthly, we want to uh, strengthen, as I said, our leadership when it comes to climate challenges. It is at the heart of our strategy. It is a key challenge. We really want to continue to develop our uh, position as a leader in the climate uh, transition. And lastly, we want to increase our uh, cash flows across the group. It is an essential uh, challenge. Remember, the crisis was uh, significant for us, and it showed our solidity, and this is thanks to our 
uh, operations and transactions which are very solid and very stable. To end my introduction, I would like to say that we resisted extremely well to the crisis and this uh, shows our robustness. We owe it to the AXA teams, to our agents and our distribution partners who were extremely uh, committed. I congratulate them and I thank them because it makes me very proud to work with teams that are so dedicated and so much focused to help our our customers. We made a, an unprecedented solidarity effort, and we also uh, had the confirmation of our strategic choices following the change coming from the COVID. We made the right choices, we have a very clear plan, and now we are focusing fully on the transformation of AXA and on uh, concentrating on the business lines and the regions that for us are the most bullish. We have great confidence in the future. Thank you very much. I now turn it over to Etienne Bois-Laurent who will show us and uh, dive down into the details of these very good results. Etienne. Thank you, Thomas. And hello, everyone. Well, I'm delighted to be here with you and to review with you the key performance indicators of the AXA Group. First, I would like to start with revenues. They reach, for fiscal 2020, 97 billion euros, almost stable, uh, down 1%. They show the robustness of the AXA group in a very tough context. We recorded high growth in Q1, then a drop in Q2 uh, under the impact of the strict uh, measures taken to fight the pandemic across our markets. We then saw business uh, pick up in Q3. Uh, then uh, accelerate in the last quarter, which uh, positions us very well for fiscal 2021. All our key segments, uh, commercial PNC, health and protection businesses, recorded fine performance levels, which shows the relevance of our strategy. The revenue in our key segments, uh, which accounts for two-thirds uh, of total performance, grew 3% for the full year, accelerating to 5% in the last quarter. We are confident for the next steps with the continuation of uh, the good price momentum in commercial PNC and increasing demand for health and protection solutions. Now, let us look at underlying earnings, which was impacted by the pandemic and by the NATCAT in 2020. Underlying earnings reached 4.3 billion euros in 2020 versus 6.5 billion back in 2019. This change can be explained by three factors. The deconsolidation of equitable holdings, the impact of the COVID pandemic and uh, natural disasters above and beyond the normalized levels. If we look at this change by line of business, we can see that in PNC, performance, uh, not including the COVID impact and NATCAT, uh, grew 2% as uh, driven by the improved technical margin. In life and saving, the technical margin was uh, partially impacted by non-recurring items, as mentioned in the first half, as the investment margin remained resilient. In the health business, we recorded good momentum across all geographies, and especially in Asia, with uh, increased uh, earnings being being offset by the impact of regulatory reform in France. Asset management performed well, as driven by the alternative assets. Remember that uh, our strategic plan, Driving Progress 2023, set a growth objective uh, of underlying earnings per share of uh, between 3 to 7 percent on average between 2020 and 2023. We've announced as a starting point for this target uh, an underlying 
earnings level of 6.3 billion euros, which has offset the non-recurring impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the net cats above and beyond the normalized level. This underlying earnings level is in line with the 2019 underlying learnings on the like-for-like -like basis and demonstrates our confidence in the execution of our new strategic plan. Let us now look at the detailed performance by uh, line of business. In PNC, revenue were up 1% for the year. In commercial PNC, we rec recorded growth of 2% for the year, with a rebound in the second half, up 2% in Q3, up 7% in Q4. The pricing momentum continues, especially with AXA XL, with increased prices of 22% uh, in the insurance business in the fourth quarter. We also benefited from significant, significant increases in reinsurance prices, up 9% during the renewal campaign. Um, in early January. This momentum continues in 2021 and will continue to positively impact the improved margins. The personal PNC business activity is almost stable. Revenue slightly dropped by 1%, especially due to the lower sales and commercial momentum during the lockdown periods in France and in Europe, especially in the motor insurance business, with prices remaining stable. Now let's, let us look at the underlying earnings picture for the PNC business. This was logically impacted by the COVID pandemic um, by some 1.5 billion euros with a higher NAT cat level with a higher frequency of hurricanes over the North Atlantic this year. In more detail, the increased technical margin went up higher than the interest income or loss. We also recorded lower reserve developments versus prior years. The result is that outside of the impact of COVID and NAT cat, the PNC underlying earnings would have grown by 2%. This is confirmed by the development in the PNC combined ratio. Not including the COVID and NATCAT impact, this would have improved by 0.5%. We remain confident in our ability to continue to improve our technical margin in order to achieve our target of a combined ratio of 93% by 2023. Let us now focus on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we confirm that its total adverse impact was 1.5 billion euros in line with our estimates back in June. In the second half of the year, we recorded an additional impact in commercial PNC, especially with AXA XL, which was offset by reduced loss ratio in the uh, retail lines. In in business interruption, we adjusted the claim expense ratio to take into account the uh, newly introduced uh, lockdown measures with rulings by judges in the UK and in Australia. It, uh, there remains a number of uncertainties connected with uh, proceedings ongoing in France. Event cancellation uh, remained quite stable. On the other lines, credit, financial lines, liability and travel insurance, we increased the respective reserves, even though we recorded a lower number of claims reported to date. The uh, rates of uh, unreported claims reached 90%. These impacts have been partially offset by a reduction in the frequency of uh, claims in uh, retail insurance, especially in the motor insurance business. In order to reduce our expo exposure going forward, we uh, reviewed and revised the clauses of our non-damage business interruption contracts across the group by explaining the exclusion factors. The rollout of these new contractual clauses are underway in the context of the campaign to renew our policy contracts. Now let us 
look at the situation with AXA Excel. We confirm our underlying earnings target of 1.2 billion euros for 2021. For fiscal 2020, the underlying earnings reached minus 1.4 billion euros as impacted by the pandemic crisis, the NatCat events, and the riots in the US. The impact of the COVID reached, as I said, 1.7 billion euros, mainly due to the business interruption losses. The expenses connected with NatCats was 0.5 billion euros. That is higher than the normalized level of 4% for fiscal 2020. This was due to a higher frequency of storms and hurricanes over the Atlantic. We also recorded 100 million euros of claims connected with the riots in the US, as mentioned in the first half. By offsetting the impact of these non-recurring claims, the adjusted underlying earnings of AXA Excel came to 1 billion euros in line with the uh, forecasts that we had set. For fiscal 2021, we renew our 1.2 billion euros target of underlying earnings. The new management team took significant measures to recover profitability. We anticipate an increase of 0.5 billion euros due to the new underwriting measures and price momentum. I would remind you that our cautious approach to NatCat with a normalized level of 6% of combined ratio versus 4% previously, we anticipate, finally, a drop of 0.1 billion euros in interest income. For fiscal 2021, we anticipate that Excel will have a combined ratio of 96%. Let us now focus on the life and saving business. You will see on this slide that our business mix continues to improve. The revenues dropped by 6% due to the reduction in general account savings in the context of the COVID pandemic, especially in France and in Italy. Protection revenue remained resilient up 2%. In France, we continue to record high demand for unit link products, which account for 48% of um, in, in personal saving revenues. That is 10 percentage points higher than the market average. Net new money shows a positive change in the business mix with less guaranteed rate business, more technical risks, more fees in connection with our strategy. Going forward in the future, we anticipate a rebound in the life and savings business revenue as the COVID impact will go down with a continued growth in the protection and unit link business. Now, let us now move to the underlying earnings for the life and savings business. As you can see, the momentum is quite similar to the one we uh, told you about in the first half. Underlying earnings went down by 7% as driven by a lower technical margin, as was explained in the first half. The investment margin remains stable at 67 basis points, with a lower investment income being offset by the lower credited rates to clients. Expenses went down, reflecting the measures to cut costs across geographies. This technical margin should improve next year with respect to the current levels, whilst the investment margin should go down slightly given the low level of interest rates. I suggest now that we focus on the health business. The uh, health business is up by 6% across all geographies for both group and personal insurance lines. In Asia, revenues grew by 9%, especially in China, with increased volumes following new partnership agreements with AXA Tianpi. We also recorded an increase in volumes in Japan and an increase in prices in Hong Kong.
Underlying earnings were down by 1%, growth in revenue being offset by an increase in our combined ratio. In France, the gains and efficiencies connected with reduced frequency in claims during the lockdown period were offset by an exceptional tax and also the French reform called 100% health, quote unquote. Going forward, we anticipate returning to normal in our growth trajectory in line with the development of our revenues. Now let us focus on asset management, which continues to be buoyed up by the alternative assets. Assets under management grew by 7%, reaching a record level of 858 billion euros. Assets managed by AXA IM alternatives grew significantly by 14%. Net new money grew uh, to 40 billion euros in the uh, core alternatives and in the core alternative sectors in our, and in our Asian joint ventures. Revenues were higher thanks to the alternative classes, which account for 40% of total revenues. Underlying earnings increased by 6%, which reflects partially the increase in assets under management and a good uh, performance in a tough year. You can expect that we'll be continuing on our growth track in our asset, in our alternative asset management uh, business, which uh, delivers high margin, which contributes for about half of our profits and continues to be very attractive in a low interest environment. Now let us focus on net income, which reached 3.2 billion euros. The realized uh, capital gains reached 337 million euros, i.e. an amount which is higher than for the first half, which reflects more favorable market conditions in the second half. Now, the non-recurring items reflect the impact of the disposals of subsidiaries as announced, the impairments of some non-consolidated assets, and the contribution to the solidarity funds, as well as an expense connected with the shutting down of two DNO liability lines in the UK and in the Lloyd's sphere. The integration and restructuration costs are mainly connected with the, the integration of Excel and with the initiatives uh, and restructuration restructuring efforts in Europe and in France. Now, with respect to our shareholders' equity, those increased by 1.7 billion euros to reach 71.6 billion euros. The net income was partially offset by dividend being paid out in July. The increase in unrealized capital gains due to the reduction in interest rates was largely compensated by the currency effect due to the appreciation of euro versus the main currencies and the increase in the uh, retirement uh, obligations. As you saw in our introductory remarks, we have a very high solvency ratio at 200%. The ratio improved by 20 points in Q4, benefiting from the integration of AXA Excel in the internal model formula of the group. This reflects the benefits of diversification resulting from the combination of Excel jointly with AXA, which made it possible to um, reduce the uh, capital charges. It is to be noted that the solvency ratio does not reflect the four percentage points of benefits uh, expected from the disposal of AXA Bank Belgium with a transaction expected to be uh, signed in the, in the first half of 2021. With respect to the management of our investment portfolio, we maintain very high discipline and we maintain a high diversification in our high quality assets. Our asset mix was stable with 80% of fixed income high quality securities. The average of the uh, Govi rating was double A, and the corporate um, uh, bond ratings uh, averaged at A. And the other uh, fixed income assets uh, also were high quality asset bad securities, where mainly triple A CLOs and mortgagers are highly guaranteed. 20% of the remaining assets are well diversified, including real estate states and uh, listed securities. Now, our exposure to the most vulnerable industries and sectors has been very limited, accounting for less than 2% of total assets, following measures taken to reduce and mitigate risk which were implemented in the course of the first half.
Nous avons constaté We recorded a slight reduction in our financial yield. Le taux de the reinvestment rate was 1.3% in the course of uh, fiscal 2020, taking advantage of our expertise with respect to alternative um, asset classes, uh, which have lower risk. With respect to the cash position of the holding company, we continue to benefit from high flexibility with respect to liquidity, with more than 4 billion euros which is an amount higher than the bracket which was given of between 1 to 3 billion euros. The key um, sources for cash changers in the year were as follows. First, a strong cash remittance level from business uh, entities uh, um, on the order of 4.8 billion euros. In the second half, the injection of equity into AXA XL were, was offset by cash remittance from other subsidiaries like Switzerland and Japan. Secondly, we received 1 billion euros in proceeds from the disposal of our operations in Central and uh, Eastern Europe, as well as 1.2 billion euros in capital gains on equity derivatives, as well as the raising of commercial paper. These items were partially uh, offset by the payout of dividend on the order of 1.7 billion euros, holding costs for 1 billion euros, as well as the restoral and the restoration of the flexibility of cash uh, in the subsidiaries on the amount of 1.4 billion Euros. Now, with respect to the debt situation of the group, as we committed uh, to doing, we significantly reduced uh, our debt in the course of the last two years to a level which is now uh, well in the uh, target bracket of between 25 to 28 percent. Uh, gearing ratio was 26.8 percent for fiscal 20, which was reduced by two percentage points versus 2019, mainly due to the debt payback on the order of 1.3 billion euros. This was back in April and as well as 0.4 billion euros paid back in December. Before I turn over to Thomas, I would like to say that uh, the uh, momentum in our revenue uh, has been good, especially due to high price increases when renewing the commercial PNC contracts. The um, earnings in um, commercial PNC business, not including the uh, COVID and NatCat, uh, grew due to the improved technical margin. We are continuing with our transformational uh, measures and initiatives at AXA Excel, and, and we renew our target of 1.4 billion euros in underlying earnings for fiscal 2021 by focusing on the high potential product. In life and savings, the business mix improves and the earnings have been resilient. In the health business, we show good revenue momentum across all geographies and especially in Asia. The earnings should keep growing as well as the growth in revenue. Asset management recorded good performance as driven by the alternative assets. The solvency ratio was robust to 200% and the cash levels in the holding company are be, uh, above our target. The prospects uh, of our key performance uh, indicators are positive and we are confident that we'll reach the targets of our plan as they were uh, announced in December last. Thank you. I now turn over to Thomas for his concluding remarks. Thank you, Etienne. By way of conclusion, it can be said that AXA demonstrated its great robustness and its uh, great responsibility in an unprecedented crisis via the measures it took to protect its customers, its clients, its employees, and societies at large. The very strong resilience of its uh, business operations, thanks to the very dynamic key preferred segments and the continuation of our operations. With a very high level in underlying earnings and robustness of our balance sheet with a solvency to ratio above our targets. We are confident for fiscal 2021 and the implementation of the uh, Driving Progress 2023 strategic plan. We now are available to answer your questions. Thank you. Première question vient d'AXA.com de Julien Lévy. AXA.com, Julien. 
Are you satisfied with the development of your business operations in Italy? What was the impact of the COVID pandemic? As a partner of MBPS, would you like to have a future, an independent future for the bank, or would you like to integrate it in another banking group, is the question. Thank you, Julien, for your question. I suggest that Antimo Peretta answers you. Knowing that the question focuses on Italy, on the impact of the COVID pandemic, and on our relationship with the PMPS. And Timo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Well, the uh, situation we experienced last year was as follows. We offset the drop in business activity via our agents, uh, but the bank was uh, uh, closed for six months. But we are very proud and very happy to have this partnership in place with the bank. The business operations with the banks are going on, and we hope that we will have some calm in the uh, banking business operations to continue on our growth track. Our collaboration will go on. We have developed a host of new products which will be marketing for our joint common clients and we hope that if the bank, whether it remains independent, whether it uh, embarks on a joint venture, we consider and uh, hope we can continue our partnership uh, with them because it's a good story that we want to continue with. So all in all, we are very happy with the business operations in Italy with fine growth. We compensated our drop in business activity despite the tough situation and we hope we'll be able to go on with our partnership with the MPS. Thank you, Antimo. Moving on to the next question. We have another question from Jean-Luc Champetier from the Investir Journal. Jean-Luc, over to you. Yes, uh, hello. Thank you for taking my question. With respect to the preferred segments in the distribution of underlying earnings, in the breakdown of underlying earnings, that is, it's hard for us to identify what fraction uh, of underlying earnings are accounted for for the commercial PNC health and protection for your preferred segments. Can you expand on that? Thank you, Jean-Luc, for your question. I will uh, ask Etienne to answer this. What is the share of underlying earnings for the preferred segments? Etienne, over to you. Well, I uh, said earlier in my talk that they accounted for about two-thirds of business activity with respect to underlying earnings, the share is uh, higher than uh, this uh, proportion. But we have a special year this year due to the COVID pandemic crisis and due to the NatCat impact. And we are slightly below uh, this uh, natural share of underlying earnings. Thank you, Etienne. Moving on to the next question. Yes, we have a question from Thierry Gouvi of News Assurance Pro Magazine. Thierry, over to you. Yes, hello everyone. Thank you for your presentation. Can you expand on the agreement you signed with NSTAR? Are you expecting some tough time from Excel in the next few months going forward? Thank you for your question. I suggest that Alban de Mayinel will answer your question because he was directly involved in the negotiations with ENSA. Alban, over to you. Uh, hello, everyone, says Alban. Thank you for your question. Well, indeed, the lines we've been protecting at Excel are those liability and commercial lines. Those lines have volatility uh, by nature. So we decided to uh, protect against uh, this uh, level of uh, volatility by taking reinsurance via what we call an ADC, Adverse Development Contract, uh, e. the adverse uh, developments uh, in these lines. And the way it's been organized, the way it's been structured is that in excess of 400 million euros of additional deviation, the losses would be borne by NSTAR up to 
50%, and we will uh, keep some 10% of the losses, losses with us. And NSTAR would uh, cover uh, up to 90% of uh, 1 billion euros in deviation. We do not expect, however, that uh, there would be especially uh, negative items with Excel, generally speaking, as we are uh, we, we have uh, appropriate reserves, as was said, with uh, um, an uh, excess provision of 200 million euros, as was said. Thank you, Alban, for this. Thierry, this is totally in line with our strategy at AXA Excel, which has been to reduce volatility in uh, financial uh, performance. Next question, please. We have a question from Florian de Lambilly from News Assurance Pro Magazine. Florian, over to you. Hello, everyone. I have uh, a series of small questions. The first is on dividend payout. ACPR and the French National Bank uh, stated that there should be caution on dividend payout this year. Do you consider that 1.43 euro is cautious and is in line with the um, request by ACPR? With respect to AXA uh, France, I read that AXA uh, recouped uh, 40,000 new contracts for the retail lines in 2020. Can you tell us what is the breakdown between the home insurance and motor insurance, and how do you explain this new business as your uh, retail uh, PNC business is going down in France? And also, can you give us an update on the uh, legal proceedings in France with respect to the restaurant owners, where you stand with this situation today, how many legal proceedings, how many lawsuits you still have ongoing, and when, um, uh, 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 and when do you think this situation will be cleared? Thank you, Florian, for your three questions. I will answer uh, to the first question, and I move that Jacques de Peretti uh, answer your second and third questions. Now, the second question, uh, uh, while focusing on our net gains for personal lines, what's the breakdown between uh, motor lines and home insurance? And the third question, an update on the litigation. Where do we stand there? Now, for your first question, you notice this. Uh, 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 the dividend of 143, uh, a decision by the board. Certainly, we're uh, in dialogue with the ACPR as usual. It's a good dialogue, which is part of a uh, good quality relationship. You also saw the communication of the ACPR last week, which calls upon caution, as you said, Florian. And we certainly still always followed such recommendations by the ACPR last year. Remember, the board of directors initially suggested a dividend of 143, and following the difficulty due to the crisis, we uh, uh, accepted the recommendation of the ACPR and paid only 50% of the dividend. And this year, the ACPR again uh, uh, asked us to be uh, cautious and given a very good solvency and good, given our very good resistance to this very strong crisis with good uh, cash level, whereby we reduced also our debt level. It is clear that the board of directors has uh, uh, c considered this decision about one 0.43, and this is why it is uh, in uh, balance with all the contributions that we have made to our employees, to our customers, and certainly as well to the society as large, where, as I showed in my presentation initially. Jacques, will you please uh, uh, take care of questions two and three of Florian? Thank you, Thomas, and good morning to all of you. Thank you, Florian, for your two questions. With respect to the to personal lines and to commercial lines, as a matter of fact, we have seen a net growth of our portfolio of 40,000 businesses on the motor lines and home uh, insurance. It is between plus 47,000 for the motor lines and minus 7,000 when it comes to uh, home uh, uh, insurance. This is a result of three years of work which consisted in reinforcing our position in this segment. We announced that through, of course, 
the digitalization of our offer, which has changed a lot, and through also the, the cover and the guarantees in the last three years, we have two new products for motor lines and for home insurance, and also through the strengthening of our quality of service, thanks to the specific actions, all is very close to our customers, to our tight agents. So we are very happy with this. We announced that, and which today, for the first year, is uh, um, positive. We want to continue on that path. We, it shows also that the impact, we would say, on our reputation about the, uh, the, the, the things, the businesses that you want us to talk was um, a modest, because this is the year when we had difficulties. It is. Uh, finally, also in this year, that we have a, a, a net uh, impact with personal lines. Now, why is it down on the uh, professional personal lines? Well, it is, you see that with professionals, given uh, the uh, uh, price discounts, the price freezes, it is negative. With regard to uh, now litigations, very quickly, as you know, our standard contract, which was the subject of several procedures, and today there are about 40 courts that uh, uh, have given a ruling up until now, uh, about 30 uh, courts uh, gave a ruling, and nearly all of them were favorable to AXA. Uh, well, in the first ruling, about 30 courts also gave a ruling with a fairly balanced uh, number which were in favor of AXA. For instance, have in mind that if the Paris Commercial Court was not in favor of AXA, other major courts such as Lyon or Toulouse or Bordeaux well uh, supported our position. So, this uh, legal instability, we uh, regret it because it creates with our customers difficulties that we don't need and that we don't wish to have. And it requires a lot of explanation and resilience. Having said that, in the coming weeks, the appeals courts, will, the appellate courts, will also give out their rulings and hopefully. Uh, we hope, really, that this legal instability will uh, cease for the benefit of all. Thank you, Jacques, and thank you, Florian, for your questions. Let's move on to the next question. We have a question from Laurence Pochard from the AGFI. Please unmute your mic. It's your turn. Thank you for your presentation. I have two questions. Could you confirm the fact that you abandoned your project Nord Stream 2 and how were you involved in financing the infrastructure? And secondly, regarding the desire to accelerate the alternatives, could you detail the segments where you will put more resources? Thank you. Very well. Thank you, Laurent, for your two questions. I suggest that Alban answer uh, your first question in regard to our commitment or uh, end of commitment in Nord Stream and Marco Morelli, who is with us and who is the CEO for AXA Investment Manager, will answer the second question about alternatives and the underlying trends. Alban, thank you for your question on Nord Stream 2. Yes, as a matter of fact, we were in the uh, in the insurance pool uh, for this project, and as was the case with others, we decided to withdraw from that project. Thank you, Alban. Marco, regarding alternatives. Good day, everyone. A good day, Laurence. On the alternatives, XIM approach will be enhance uh, in capital raising in the U.S., in North America, by supplementing the range of products that exist on the alternative side in the real estate, in the equity, in the real estate infrastructure initiatives. At the same time, we want to reinforce and increase the penetration into uh, structured finance, structured finance. Thank you, Marco. Next question. We will now switch to questions from AXA.com. AXA.com. The um, question is from Ben Dyson of S&P Market, Intel, Global Market Intelligence. 
what level of further coronavirus claims is ACTA expecting in 2021, and where will these claims come from, i.e. future business interruption verdicts, event cancellations, etc.? Thank you, uh, Ben, for your question. Um, I will hand that question over to Alban de Mainel. So, um, in 2021, we have significantly uh, decreased our exposure to further claims from COVID. Um, you, you have seen that in 2020, the, um, uh, those claims came mainly from two lines, event cancellation and business interruption. So event cancellation, we have written um, extremely few events in 2021, as you can imagine, and uh, the covers of those events exclude um, the COVID. For business interruption, uh, we have uh, also engaged in a process to get rid of the COVID covers in our business in our non-damage business interruption uh, policies. Uh, that will be uh, completed at the end of the of the year, when all policies have been renewed. Uh, but uh, already you can see that around April, 60 to 70 percent of our policies will have been renewed with the exclusion of the, um, of the COVID um, covers. And uh, uh, therefore, we don't expect uh, significant claims in 2021 coming from COVID. Thank you, Alban, and thanks, Ben, for your question. We go to the next question. Nous avons une question. We have a question from Christian Schubert from the Frankfurt, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. Christian, over to you. Yes, hello. Thank you. I wanted to know, you said that you went out of North Stream, North Stream 2. Why did you move out of uh, this project? Thank you for your question. I will uh, turn over to Alban, and who already spoke about North Stream 2 and the pool. As you saw, the North Stream 2 project is subject to potential sanctions by the U.S. government. So we took uh, this uh, potential sanction risk into account, our exposure across the board uh, to the U.S. market, and we decided uh, jointly with the other uh, participants in this pool to move out, to withdraw from it for these reasons. Uh, thank you, Christian, for your question, and thank you, Alban, for your answer. Next question, please. We have a question from Thibaut Madelin from the Les Echo magazine. Thibaut, over to you. Yes, uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for taking my question. Can you tell us what is your view of uh, Massif's uh, plan to acquire Aviva France, which would make uh, Massif a key competitor to you in the French market. And there are other Aviva assets which are on sale in other European countries. Are you interested by those assets? Thank you, Thibault, for this question. I will uh, uh, suggest that Jacques will first answer your question for the French market. I will, and I will take over and expand on an answer um, for the international scene. In many insurance companies, it can be seen uh, that they are embarking on a move that AXA started back in 2016 that is focuses on those markets when uh, insurance uh, um, demand is high, uh, making those markets key markets. And the crisis stepped up this thinking process and development in many companies. But it's quite natural uh, that companies should think they should focus on uh, some markets, on some key markets. And this is exactly what AXA has been doing now with respect to our commitment uh, to such discussions. As you may know, AXA has a uh, a high presence and is highly focused on its uh, core business operations. We have a large presence in Europe and in France. We are the global leading insurer company for uh, commercial uh, lines, and uh, we are uh, very well positioned in uh, high growth Asian markets as well as in those uh, markets in emerging countries, which gives us. A, a, a very uh, robust base for organic growth, and we are very much focused in uh, growing and expanding this footprint. Of course, 
if uh, if I comes up in a market which looks relevant uh, to us and to shareholders, of course, because it was very clear for us in our communication uh, of our strategic plan that financial discipline would prevail. Um, and of course, we would uh, be looking at such acquisition targets, but uh, it is not our uh, core primary activity day in, day out. Uh, Jacques, please uh, answer the question for Aviva France and the, the French uh, market. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Thibault, for your question. Well, we've been considering that in France, this uh, teaming up does not uh, generate uh, a major change in competitive situation because from what we've understood, each existing partner will remain per se in uh, their respective situations. And we already had um, Aviva enjoying a significant market share in France. Uh, so no major change, basically, in the French market. Major changes and moves in the French market are more with respect to the gradual increase in the bank assurance business and participants, which uh, we are confronted with and against which we have, or for which we have lots of uh, positive arguments, especially in the retail market, and uh, lots of changes are happening with respect to changes in uh, policyholder behavior, quality of service, digitizing. This is uh, our main concern today. Thank you, Jacques, for your answer. Moving on to the next question, please. We now switch to questions from AXA.com. The next question is from Katie Scott of Insurance Times. How would you describe AXA's performance in the UK PNC market, specifically in 2020? Thank you, Katie, for your question. And uh, I will hand that question over to Antimo Peretta, who also oversees uh, uh, the UK and can give us uh, his view on the UK performance in 2020. Antimo. Thanks a lot for these questions. I should say that uh, in the UK market, our performance has suffered logically from the situation coming from the COVID. Uh, um, we have uh, a great um, uh, su success on, on, on the retail, on, on the commercial line. But uh, overall, I would say that uh, the COVID and the economic environment has uh, impacted us in, in the growth on, on the PNC and, and, in the, and especially in the commercial lines uh, part. Uh, overall, we will still be confident for the future because we have uh, um, developed very good products and, uh, and also the way that we are working with uh, our partners will, will help us uh, to, 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 to get up uh, in, in the grow in, in the coming years. Thank you, Antimo, and we go to the next question. Our next question is from Samuel Casey of Insurance Insider. Why did you choose this year when rates are finally rising well to change underwriting strategy and reduce premium income at AXA XL? Thank you very much, Samuel, for this uh, question. Uh, I will hand it over to uh, Alban. And uh, just before Alban is answering, um, I think there is no contradiction between uh, focusing uh, on the profitability uh, in an environment of rising rates. On the contrary, it is a great opportunity uh, to really focus on the profitability. Alban, maybe you can uh, enlarge on this a little bit. I think you, you've said um, almost it all, uh, Thomas. Uh, there are two aspects. One, we are not saying that we don't want to uh, underwrite or that, what, that we want to reduce our underwriting at Excel. What we're saying is that we, we want to underwrite uh, at the right price and we are helped for this by the, um, uh, by the current market environment with, with rising prices. The other aspect which is important is that we want also to uh, slightly change the shape of our portfolio and we've taken some measures um, on several lines, notably uh, property, but also some financial lines in the UK to reduce our exposure to those lines in line with our risk appetite. So um, we are benefiting from uh, the rise in, in rates, in premium rates, and we are not at all um, targeting a reduction as such of, uh, of Excel's um, business. Thank you, Alban, and we move to the next question. 
Nous n'avons plus de questions sur AXA.com. We don't have any more questions on AXA.com. We don't have any more questions on Microsoft Teams. I suggest uh, the journalists raise their hands by using the raise your hand uh, feature on Teams if you have more questions to ask. D'autres questions Any more questions N'hésitez pas à lever la main. Please feel free to raise your hands on the platform if you have more questions to ask. N'hésitez pas, donc vous avez encore d'autres questions If you have more questions, please ask them. There doesn't seem to be any more questions. Well, thank you, Sister Maboubel. Uh, it seems we've answered all your questions. I would really like to thank you all for taking part in uh, this uh, earnings uh, press release and for asking your questions. Once again, the AXA Group performance uh, has been very fine performance uh, with uh, revenue almost uh, stable, with an extremely robust uh, balance sheet and with uh, profitability levels, which in this uh, very tough uh, crisis context uh, uh, coming out at a very high level. We are very confident for fiscal 2021 and we'll do our utmost to once again succeed in uh, posting fine performance in fiscal 2021. Have a great day. Thank you. Goodbye.